Så spiller jeg ham andre her. Mr. M. Maksud, President of the CI. Dr. Michael Claude from ZIZ. Dr. Mohamed Kamru Zaman, Senior Vice President of the CI. Honorable Vice President and Director of the CI Board, the student member of the CI. The student's presence, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor for me to be invited to today's event and speak a few words on this very important topic. And I'm sure how important we will see in future, but already you have seen in uh, Michael's presentation that how many times he mentioned BGMA, BGMA, BGMA. So it looks that how important BGMA and how important this RMD sector for our economy. Uh, right now, out of our total export, 85% is RNG. Two years back, it was 81.58%, and now it is we, our government, and all of us are trying to and uh, they're working so that we should not depend on one product. Fortunately or unfortunately, the dependency is increasing on one product because uh, the other sector should not perform what RNG is performing. And we all know that because of the geopolitical reason and especially Russia-Ukraine war, the inflation, the cost of uh, the inflation have gone up and to control the inflation, all the economies, bankers have only one option, one choice to increase the interest rate, bank interest rate, so that cost of fund goes up, money supply goes down, but it also increases the production cost of the manufacturer. So, in 2023, out of our total global clothing turnover is going to be, is going to be shrink in 2023. What was in 21, 22, we had a good growth, but in 23, the global RNG trading or export is going to shrink. But so far, up to and August, I think most probably only Bangladesh are in a positive growth compared to 2022. All other big garment manufacturers and suppliers like China as number one, Vietnam in US as number two, and then India, Pakistan, Cambodia, all are having a negative growth only. Bangladesh so far have a positive growth. At, pre at present time and context, human rights and environmental due diligence has become a core area of priority as well as a concern in the global business landscape. Bangladesh being an increasingly integrated economy in the global trade cannot be indifferent on this matter. I extend my sincere thanks to the Bangladesh German Chamber of Commerce and industry for taking this timely initiative and organizing this seminar on the German Due Diligence and Supply Chain Act, which is designed to protect human rights and limit environmental harm by making it mandatory for all the actors across the supply chain. Over the past decade, Bangladesh RMG industry has proved its resilience and shown commitment for the betterment of its, of, of its workers community and environment. Our relentless effort progresses in social and environmental fronts and our vision toward sustainability has positioned ourselves as a role model. In the past decade, we laid a strong foundation in workplace safety and workers' well-being. Even during the turmoil caused by COVID pandemic and ongoing geopolitical tension, we have reached the highest number of lead factories certified by USGBC, United States Green Building Council. I'm glad to let you know that Bangladesh is the only, not only the safest apparel 
manufacturing country in the world, we are the home of 202 lead certified R&D industries, of which 73 are platinum, out of global top 15 certified establishment, out of top world 15 top, 13 are in Bangladesh. Number one in Bangladesh, number two is another country, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, in Bangladesh, 10 in other country, again 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 are in Bangladesh. Out of world top, 154 are in Bangladesh. Our manufacturers have made a huge investment and efforts to build a resilient, sustainable and forward-looking industry which only testifies our vision and commitment. To keep this momentum of transformation continued, BNUA has set up a sustainability vision 2030 by prioritizing ESG, environment, social and government. That means environment, social and government, which aims to reduce 30% carbon emission, 50% of use of sustainable raw materials, 50% reduction of groundwater uses, 100% use of zero discharge of hazardous chemical, 30% reduction of energy use, 20% use of renewable energy, and 30% reduction of deforestation, 100% of the inclusive and decent work, gender equality, good health and well-being of employees and good governance. We are creating an online data platform for baselining current industry performance on those parameters and continuously track the progress. As we have gathered here to discuss about the German due diligence on the human rights and environment, I can only tell that Bangladesh is in a better much position than many other manufacturing countries, which you also heard from Dr. Michael. Because of our transparency and progress, we already met. Yet, we are not complacent. First of all, we need to learn about the due diligence, due diligence protocol. We need to take enough preparation for adjustment and capacity building at our end. And we need to be ready to open ourselves more by disclosing information and reporting our own sustainability practices. This will be the key to our future business. From BGM, we have taken the issues of due diligence with utmost importance. You will be happy to know that. We have set up a dedicated unit at BGM Title Responsible Business Hub to build capacities for our manufacturers to adopt and comply with the new regulation and reporting requirement. The aim of this hub is to serve as an information center, raising awareness, providing training and providing guidance to the manufacturer companies on the standard and requirement of human rights and environmental due diligence. We have set up this unit with the support from GIZ so my sincere thanks to ZIZ again. Taking about the emerging due diligence protocol does not end the manufacturer's responsibilities only. On the other major implication of due diligence is it is the cost of compliance. I would urge the stakeholder, particularly the buyers, to take this matter in due consideration to share the burden with their supply chain partners. Cost escalation leading to a erode competitiveness should not kill business and make it further challenging for the SMEs in particular. I think we have more to work on this area and we need a greater collaboration between manufacturers, association, buyers, development partners and government to ensure a fair and level playing field for all of us. At the same time, multiple protocol laws and regulation in different countries make it confusing. We have corporate sustainability due diligence and directive by European Union, French cooperative duty of vigilance law, 2015 Modern Slavery Act, the UK's own due diligence and legislation for supply chain, Dutch bill on the responsible and sustainable international business conduct, etc., etc. We need informality among this legislation so that while complying with one legislation, no deviation occurs in other. 
Implementing and executing due diligence is a continuous process that requires our undivided attention. We need to create an enabling environment for collaboration among the stakeholders within the supply chain. In addition to the brand, the development partners, particularly donor agencies, can play an important role by promising and incentivizing responsible business and sustainable trade issues. The policymakers on both suppliers and consumers side should encourage more socially inclusive business approaches through policy and other support to smoothen the path towards responsible business. I hope today's seminar will help our manufacturers and stakeholders to gain the much needed insight on the topic and stay ahead of time. Thank you for your patient hearing. Bye, Bangla. Long live our Thank you. Bye, Bangla.